Hi everybody, this is Peg Fitzpatrick. I am here today for a very special hangout to talk about one of my very favorite things, which is Pinterest. So, I, um, if you want to know more about us, you can click on our profiles on Google+, and there is a ton of information. I will suffice to say I am Peg Fitzpatrick. I am head of social strategy for Canva. I am joined by Cynthia Sanchez, who has been a friend of mine for a very long time. We started talking to each other about Pinterest. Pinterest. Cynthia has an amazing podcast called Oh So Pinteresting and a really beautiful website, so you should check that out. And Vincent, our other guest, is actually Cynthia's partner. They work on things together talking about Pinterest. And Vincent, can you say your last name for me so I don't say it wrong? Yeah, it's not your fault. Uh, the British never gave me a vowel in my name, so it's really hard for it. It's, it's actually just pronounced ing. That's all it is. Ing? So yeah, it sounds like it. it's an I. Okay, got it. That's so easy, yeah. but I, did, I don't like saying people's name, so I'm sorry. I should have asked that before. So <laughs> is a Pinterest marketing specialist out of British Columbia, and together, Cynthia and Vincent are going to provide us with a fantastic presentation today on Pinterest. So we're going to get right to it. If you guys have questions, you can put them in the event page. We will try to get to them at the end, but because we are doing a presentation, we're not going to stop during the presentation to answer questions. If we miss your questions, please tag us in the event and we will answer them after the Hangout. And, and on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Vincent, who's going to drive the presentation, and Cynthia, who's going to be the talking. So don't try this at home, kids, or you can go out, but <laughs> here we go. Yes, we are professionals. We have been trained. Yes, definitely need those warnings. Do not try this at home alone. <laughs> right. Do you guys want to add, do you want to have anything to intro before you start into your presentation? Well, Peg, just thanks so much for, for inviting us to do this. This is a lot of fun. As you said, this is you know one of my favorite things to talk about, and I, I really appreciate this opportunity. Thanks so much. And, and getting to work with Vince, it just makes it that much better. So it's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, people on Google Plus in particular are kind of confused with Pinterest. So we went with the really basic Pinterest 101. Like, so I'm excited for people to see a little bit more about what it is because Pinterest is the best marketing. And aside from the fact that it's just really fun, it's great marketing. Exactly. So, exactly. And that's sure what we're going to do. Awesome. Well, I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> you guys go right ahead. Okay, I'll start. Uh, I'll start the slide share. I mean, or not? Yeah, the screen share. Click on that. It could be a slide share later. <laughs> could be. Yeah, that's true. And just let me know if everybody can see that. Uh, you know, technical difficulties are a possibility. And can everybody see the Pinterest 101 screen yet? Yes. Okay. Can excellent. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to the amazing Cynthia Sanchez. <laughs> oh, thanks so much, Vincent. Well, as Peg mentioned, we are talking about Pinterest 101 today. And, and, you know, it really is good, even if you have been on Pinterest for a little while, to get back to the basics, to really know what it's all about and why. Um, sometimes we join things just because it's what the crowd is saying you should do and what, you know, media says you should do. But really, let's take a look at why it would be important, maybe some of the benefits. We do have just a limited amount of time today, so we're not going to spend too, too long on that. But let's go ahead and take it just one of the biggest reasons, one of the main reasons why Pinterest should have some attention. Um, and I think Vincent has changed the slide. Um, Peg, could you uh, kind of box in Vincent for yep. me? I can't. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, well, that's okay. Um, there it is. So. Why Pinterest? Well, this is just a, a, question, a, a screenshot here, I'm sorry, of one pin. This is just one pin. And I know there's lots of little arrows. You can see six arrows. And, and each one of those arrows represents a link back to your sites. One of Pinterest's biggest strength, I guess, one of its main feature points is its ability to drive traffic. Um, it's, you don't use Pinterest for you know, necessarily having conversations back and forth, although you kind of can do that in the comment section. That really isn't its main intent. It's really to help people discover things, what they're interested in, and the way they help you do that is to link back to sites online. And from just one pin, you can have up to six ways to go back to your site. As you can see from this image, all these little different ways link back to your site. And there's a little screenshot there at the bottom of my Google Analytics. And one day I just was looking and it's like, why did I get this big jump in traffic? What happened there? Um, and I went and did, did a little research in my Google Analytics, which we all know is free. Um, and I got back to this pin. And it just so happened that Luke Dean Weimark happened to 
pin one of my pins, one of uh, a link that goes back to one of my podcast episodes that had come out weeks prior. This wasn't brand new when he pinned it. It had come out a couple of weeks before that, and it got 88 repins from D from Luke. And Luke has close to a million followers. Prior to this, we had kind of touched base on a Google Hangout one time, but we really hadn't had much, com you know, contact after that. But I guess he kind of found me on Pinterest, found something that it, you know was interesting to him, pinned it, and it sh he shared it with all of his followers, and it drove that nice spike in traffic back to my site. And this happens over and over and over again. And as Luke continues to grow his following, and they go and check out his boards, which we'll kind of talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, what boards are, what pins are, that type of thing. Um, but as, as he grows more followers, that pin, that image, and all of those links back to my site stay there. So I will continue to get traffic from just this one pin. And as you can see up at the very top corner there, from his account, it had been repinned or shared, kind of like you do on Google+, 88 times at that point. And this was quite a while back. This is kind of an old screenshot. So I'm sure that number up top has continued to grow and has continued to bring more traffic back to my site to get people to read my content, to contact me for my training or my services or anything like that. So that is really, I think, one of the biggest and best reasons to pay attention to Pinterest. Yeah, and I think Cynthia, you really covered on a, a you know a wide variety of reasons why you know Pinterest is it, it is it's a really powerful social network. Um, now the question is, who exactly is using Pinterest? Um, it has 70, 70 million global plus users. Um, what's really interesting is that it's extremely popular in the U.S., which is not a big surprise. About one in five Americans are actually on Pinterest right now. Now, if you're wondering what other countries Pinterest is really popular in, Canada is actually number two. Approximately one in 10 Canadians are using Pinterest, uh, and UK is actually having a surge of um, Pinterest users over there. So if you do business in the UK, I would highly recommend that you kind of start jumping on board of that. Now, based on Pew Research, um, Approximately, uh, there's 84% of the 84% of the users are actually women in the U.S. So, huge, huge female population on there. Uh, again, if you have products that you love to sell that are, you know. Uh, female centric, it's it's the place to go. Uh, if you're wondering about age demographics, um, this is kind of relatively new. So this is a report based on uh, Pew Research in January 2014. 27% of the people that are using Pinterest are between the ages of 18 to 29. 24% of the people that are using Pinterest are between the ages of 30 to 49. So there's a really huge kind of demographic of, of buyers that are on Pinterest. Now, other people want to know, are people poor ass broke on Pinterest? Um, actually, quite, <laughs> quite the opposite. <laughs> That's totally what they're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, is, is, is it, you know, is it poor ass broke? No, this, this is not, I'll be honest, this is not a poor network. About 38% had a household income of $75,000 and more. So there is money to be made. It's, it's <laughs> as close as Pinterest gold as it gets. So let's move on to the next slide, number four. Okay, so we know that, you know, why people use Pinterest or why you should pay attention to Pinterest because of all that traffic. To get attention from all of those people that Vincent just mentioned are on Pinterest, to get your hands into that little bit of that $75,000 a year income, right? That is a big, big reason. But what really, how does Pinterest work? Well, going back to the very basics of Pinterest, Pins, which are images that come from either online sources, websites, blogs, that type of thing, or images that you upload to Pinterest um, are now called pins. Once they're on your, your account, they're called pins. Those pins, those images, are then categorized onto boards or grouped into boards. And those groups and categories can be about anything under the sun, anything that you want at all. Um, and if you do have an online business or even a physical business with an online presence, chances are somebody's interested in what you have to offer, right? Your blog, your podcast, your business, you know, your products, your services. And Pinterest is all about interests um, and people's interests. This is a very kind of self-centered social network, if you will, because it's all about me. If you look at this, this screenshot here, the big picture that you see in the background there with kind of the grid, that is my account. And it's all about me and my business. Um, so it, um, in my case, it's all focused towards Pinterest and social media and blogging and speaking and all those things that I do professionally up at the top. But for me, since I am my business 
if, he, if we were able to scroll down on the screenshot, you would see at the bottom that it's more about me personally and the things that I'm personally interested um, in. And you can choose to create your account in whatever way that you want to. Keep it all really business focused or throw in some personality, some you know personal interests in there as well. Or you could have two separate accounts. I know Vincent has two separate accounts, one that's very personal and you know just things he's interested in personally and the other one focused on his business. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can set up your account. I do want to recommend though if you are looking at setting up a Pinterest account or you have already set one up and it is being used for business purposes to link people back to your website where you do sell products, services or you know ads or sponsored posts or anything um, then it is it should be a business account uh, according to their terms of service, their guidelines, their policies um, they do want people using Pinterest for business to have a business account and to do that or to see if you have a business account already you might have changed it and aren't sure go to business. Pinterest.com um, and there it'll allow you to convert your personal account into a business account with just a couple of clicks in the mouse. You don't lose any followers and it gives you access to analytics. Um, if you go up to your settings box on your Pinterest account profile on any page, go up to the very top where you see your profile image up at the top right um, and then you'll have a drop down menu that appears and choose the settings option or, or you'll in the drop-down menu where you see settings, um, you'll also see analytics if you have a business account. If you don't see analytics there, you have a personal account. Um, so be sure to be aware of that um, and you want to make sure when you're, you're creating your account um, to, to choose more topics and titles um, that are keyword rich, you know, that have keywords that, that people will be searching for to find you and your products and services. So it'll be easy for people to, to find you on Pinterest and follow you. So yeah. go ahead and, and talk about the, the business versus personal accounts, Vincent. Yeah, so Cynthia actually covered a lot of it already, which is fantastic. Makes my job Sorry. much easier. No, that's okay. It makes my job much easier. It's you know, like she uh, can't stop talking about I can't. I can't. <laughs> Um Yeah, so but basically, you know, Cynthia's right on the ball is that, you know, with a business account, it's actually mandatory if you run any type of business. So whether your, your site is an affiliate marketing site or whether you are a product marketing site or whatever it is, make sure that you go and register for a business account. Uh, and one of the main advantages that I, I believe are, is probably going to happen is that if you eventually want to do advertising with Pinterest, um, which is a whole new ballpark in itself, uh, you probably have to have a business account. So really register for a business account. Uh, one of the main advantages is again you can have a really long name. So instead of having like a first name and a last name which you have in a personal account, you can just have one name that just says your company name or whatever it is that you decide to do. Um, if, for ex another thing is that if you run an e-commerce platform uh, with a business account, uh, you can get rich, pro rich pins for products. Um, that's really important. Uh, you can still get rich pins for your blog if it's a personal account. Um, that's not a problem, but, but definitely if you sell products, you got to get a business account. Um, so make sure that, again, if you're a business, get the business account. If you're just using it for personal purposes, you're not planning to make any money, uh, you're not planning to do anything shady, um, then just <laughs> stick to a personal account. It's absolutely fine. Uh, and if people are wondering where these photos are from, yes, they are from Canva. And yes, I did. I paid for them because they are nice photos. I want to use them. <laughs> Thank you. Not sponsored. Yes, yeah. I wanted to make sure that Peg got paid too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so moving on. There we go. You know, Vincent, I just kind of lost your sound a little bit. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can no, you hear me? No, now? Yeah. Now it's perfect again. Now it's perfect. Okay. You're back. Oh, that's so You're weird. Back. Okay, sorry. Hopefully, didn't miss too much of the last part. Um, it was just brief. Uh, I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So here's the next slide. Which Cynthia is going to talk about uh, profile optimization with Pinterest. Yeah, yeah, and you know, as we kind of start talking, you know, if you do, if you are using Pinterest for your business, you want to be found. You don't want to kind of sit there with crickets chirping around. You want to be found, and and one of the best ways to help that along is with your Pinterest account profile image, and your settings, and your description, and everything that's on there. And here is a screenshot of all three of ours, and you can see that they're all just a little bit different. As with other things online, there really is no hard and fast right way or wrong way to do things. There are variations and you need to see what works best for you. Uh, Peg's account is, is all about her and what she's into, what she's interested in, and has some business stuff in there with social media architect, marketer, that type of thing. So she's kind of got it, you know, a little a balance of both. Uh, 
Vincent likes to talk about what he's able to accomplish with his business. And let's kind of drives that curiosity of, oh, look at what Pinterest, I mean, what Vincent was able to do with Pinterest for one of the businesses he worked with. So very good strategy from Vincent there. Uh, for me, I wanted to make sure that my name was first because I did start it as a personal account and then converted it to a business account and I am my business, but I wanted to have that business name as well in there. So my blog name, my business name is in the very top as well. Um, just in case people are searching for me personally or for the business, they can find me. Um, and as far as profile image, you have lots of options there as well too because every place that you have activity on Pinterest, that profile image shows up. So you would like to choose something that's really consistent, whether it be a logo or you know a headshot that you use on other social networks. So people can kind of start recognizing you across the different social networks. I did something a little bit different. Have you know I've kind of done this for the last couple of years, and I, and what I did because I want people to know it's me, but also I have more. This isn't just a personal um, Pinterest account. I put my logo underneath um, because right now on Pinterest you can't tell the difference between a business account or a personal account. So by using the headshot, um, okay, that's fine, but I wanted people to know that there was more to me. Maybe drive a little bit of curiosity. It's like, oh, well, what's that logo underneath? What is oh so Pinteresting? Hoping to kind of get a little bit more attention from that. Um, and, and I think it's worked so far. You can see also in each one of our profiles we have linked them up to both our Twitter accounts and our Facebook accounts. Which which is really good because, as I mentioned before, um, conversation and, and communication is pretty limited on Pinterest and there is no way to communicate privately on Pinterest at all. So uh, a way that you can kind of help encourage that is to link your other social networks and of course link back to your site where people can send you emails and, and comments and that type of thing as well. As far as the social networks go, you can only link to a personal Facebook profile right now. You can't link to a Facebook page. So if your your personal profile is, is very personal <laughs> and you don't want that connected with your Pinterest business account, you might not want to connect Facebook with with um, with your Pinterest account right now. But but you know if you set up your privacy settings and, and you're comfortable with that, you can definitely do that. Um, I was logged into my account when I took these screenshots and you can see that there's a little pencil here. So if you want to make some changes on your account, on your account profile setting here, all you have to do is click on that little pencil. Um, if you're following other people or seeing other people's accounts, you'll see the little flag here instead. But it's really easy. Just click there, fill in the boxes and change what you need to change. Vincent, do you want to talk a little bit about boards to create in your account when you're you know, either first creating or maybe building up your account? <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Cynthia. I really appreciate the transition. Um, and so just kind of keep in mind, one of the other things uh, when you're doing your profile picture is that when you are when you have the mobile apps, uh, the pictures actually become circular. So that's something to kind of keep in mind that you want to make sure that, you know, your face or whatever, your logo is kind of in the middle. You don't want it off to the side or anything like that because then it just kind of looks weird on the mobile device. Um, now, in terms of the, the boards, um, you know, you want to create boards that are just related to you know who you are or what your business is about and it's okay to show off a little personality there's nothing wrong with that like Cynthia had mentioned you know she was talking a little bit about her business in the beginning with her boards but then as you scroll down further it kinda shows a personal interest I want to kinda show off two of my favorite boards um, Starbucks loves which recently I have actually ironically I've been falling in love with now because they've done a really great job of kinda of revamping their their Pinterest account it wasn't really that great before but now they've done an excellent job. And so with Starbucks Loves, um, it actually shows off things that, again, what they really love. So Starbucks Loves the perfect latte. Um, and inside there are pins that are just related to lattes and they're gorgeous. And if you follow Starbucks account, they have 152,000 followers, but they usually get like hundreds, usually 100 or 180 repins for their products. So people love their stuff. Uh, Starbucks Loves coffee moments. They love espresso. They love handcrafted. Uh, the one board that I love, which I, I thought would go more viral but didn't, is the White Cup Contest. And that was a board that was just dedicated to people drawing on Starbucks cups. That's all it was. It was bloody brilliant. You get to see art. And at the same time, it's promoting Starbucks. So I thought that was really, really good. It actually went viral on Instagram. <laughs> Did it? Yeah, I can imagine probably did. Yeah, because yeah, I was it, like, I thought it, it, it was. It, it was very, very popular on Instagram, the same campaign. Because it was, uh, yeah, it's, like, it's just this is this. It's funny because I actually managed a Starbucks for five years. It's the kind of stuff I wish we had, we could do, you know, five years ago. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so another one is pet plan insurance. So a lot of people go, oh God, insurance, that's, that's so boring. Who, who wants to pin about insurance? Well, pet plan insurance wants to pin about insurance. And something that they do that's really well done is that they always make sure that their boards actually have a description in them. Um, there's too many boards out there that have no description. So when you click on a board, let's say I click on handcrafted, and there's no description, I was like, what is this? Is this like handcrafted Etsy things? Or is this like handcrafted like technical things? Um, make sure that you fill in that description so that when people land on it, they know, hey, this is about kitty companions. And this is about the common health problems that they have. So by being able to provide a great resource, whether it's a board or a pin, is really going to attract the right type of users. Uh, so th that's how you kind of create niche boards. Think about your customers, think about them, and be a resource to them. So let's move on to the next slide, and I'm just going to pass that on to the amazing Cynthia Sanchez again. Oh, you're <laughs> sweet. You're sweet. Um, but I like what you just said right there, Vincent. Be a resource for people. And it is really important to pin other people's content to be that resource. One way to think of your Pinterest account is uh, as a, a library, whether you know, personal library, public library. It's a library. It's a public library on Pinterest, I guess. And if you walk into a library with only a if only a collection of books from one author, that would be kind of boring, I would think. Even if they wrote every day and published a book every day, that's just from one author. It's one perspective. That's just one source of information. You want to bring in multiple authors, multiple sources, and make your Pinterest account a resource for the people that you're trying to attract back to your business, right? Um, you know, and that could even include pinning, you know, other people's products that you know maybe are supportive of yours, or maybe even a competitor's if you want to be that nice. You know, maybe they do have something a little bit better than you do right now that you just can't offer. For quite yet, serve the people that you want to attract back to your business. Um, and you want to show that love all the way around. You don't just want it to be me, me, me. So do that with your boards, and you can have a combination of boards. Some boards on my account have Pinterest resources from all sorts of different places, not just my Pinterest content that I write about, but people like Peg and what she writes about, what Vincent writes about, what other people you know write about as far as Pinterest. But I have a few boards where it is just my content because if people want to have a handy resource to see the things that I have written about about Pinterest or have you know made videos about or podcast, then they can just go that. So it makes it handy and easy for them. Think about it from the perspective of the people that you're trying to serve, and I, I really don't think that you'll be able to fail. It'll be impossible. You, you will succeed. Um, so, so keep that sharing and that love alive on Pinterest. Um, and, and Vincent, one question that I continue to get over and over again, and is, is a little bit confusing for people, especially when they're first getting started out on Pinterest. Let's say they do make one of those great images on Canva. They have those nice big Pinterest templates now and all of those. Um, great stock images that you could use to make those beautiful pins. Um, what if you want to upload an image to Pinterest, but then have it go somewhere else? How do you do that? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. And so let's kind of move on to the next slide. Yeah. Well, and, I guess I will. Okay. I will go ahead and talk about this one since I did kind of make this slide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Have you seen that question come up a lot for you too? You know, it's it's funny. I think it's ironic because uh, I don't actually. I think I I don't necessarily see the question come up a lot. But then I think people. It's more one of those things that they don't know what they don't know. Uh, exactly. And so, yeah, I yeah. know I could do that. Yeah. yeah. So and then, let's see. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So you make one of those great images. There's a couple of ways that you can add those great big images from Canva or wherever else you make them, and and you know, or if you have different sizes that, or maybe a different collage of image that you didn't use in your blog post, or maybe you have something new, and you want to share that specifically on Pinterest. If you go up to the very top, and I know it's kind of small on this screen, there's a little plus sign next to your profile image, and if you're looking at all of your pins by clicking on the the pin count underneath your profile image, there'll be a place there with a plus sign as well. There you can add a pin and it'll open up a pop-up window that lets you download or upload I guess uh, an image from your hard drive straight to Pinterest um, and then it'll be there and it'll be just like a regular pin but it'll link to nowhere and a pin link to nowhere is a really a missed opportunity for you if you've spent all that time creating that image you want to take people back to where they can find more information about it um, and the way you do that is you click on the little pencil when you hover over the pin or you expand the pin and there you'll see a little pencil there as well and then it'll give you an option another pop-up box will appear that says source next to it and there'll be a place where you can pop in a URL and that URL will then be attached to that image that you created and that you 
uploaded from your computer. And you can do this both on your um, on your desktop, your you know your laptop or whatever, or from your mobile app as well. You can upload images. So let's say we're on, you know, we want to maybe we're pinning an event we're at, which you know you can do on Pinterest as well. Um, you could then upload it straight from your mobile device and then link it back to the event's homepage or maybe a blog post you wrote about or writing about the event or something like that. Um, but that's where you do that, and you just make sure you save those changes. And that's another way that you can bring in content and share content onto Pinterest. It all doesn't have to be straight from websites that have already, you know, have those images on there. You can create images specifically for the Pinterest audience. Which I actually do that quite a bit when I find blog content that I really like, uh, but they don't have a good pinnable image. I do create my own graphics because if you pin a teeny image, it's not really going to do well on Pinterest at all. Uh, and my blog actually, the header, if people pin the header on it, it's very small. So. I actually make for, for blogs that I want to share, I will create a custom Pinterest image and it's well worth it because they they look great. Yeah, yeah, they're easy to make now. It's it's fast to do, so might as well. Might as well. So how can people find those relevant pins and boards and things to kind of build that community on Pinterest, Vincent? Yeah, that that is a good question because you know, obviously when we start off, we're all like okay, well, how do I exactly find these, these people that I, I want to connect with? Because Pinterest is really, um, it is about interest. It's about connecting people with interests that are similar to yours. It's not necessarily there to kind of comment and, and to chit-chat with friends. Uh, so there's actually a lot of different options when it comes to finding ways to be able to, to find people. So number one is that you can actually go to the desktop version of Pinterest because I find this is actually the easiest way to, to search for things is to use the search box that's right up here. Now I am a bit of a Batman geek. Um, I do confess that I do actually have a Batman toy at home. So maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'm interested in looking to see if there are other people that have Batman toy collections and, and see what kind of cool stuff they have. So I can kind of go up to the search box here and then just type in Batman toys and then click on this magnifying glass um, that allows for search. Now what's really fascinating about Pinterest is that they will actually give you the most popular searches. So here's a funny thing. If you start typing in the word, uh, maybe, maybe it's just me, but if you start typing in the word Cynthia, you will see about three quarters of the way down, Cynthia Sanchez name actually pops up. It's really, it's really weird. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> yeah, you know that Cynthia, or? I said that is pretty weird. <laughs> but, but your no, name but is with, like Cynthia Rowley, Cynthia Sanchez. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the funny thing is, as I typed in Cynthia, there was one that said Cynthia Vincent, but it's not even like, oh, it's not even our stuff. I'm like, I was so disappointed. <laughs> 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 Anyways, um, but moving on. So when you search by default, it searches for pins. So you will be able to find some great stuff. Again, if you're into Mr. Potato Head that's villainous, maybe that's mm -hmm. your stuff. Uh, you can search by boards. So, so boards that have that name. So again, if you are in the banana business and you want to see other people that love bananas, you know, use the board option. Um, if you're looking for pinners that are specific, uh, again, t click on pinners, use the search. Uh, you'll be able to find other people that have actually named their their account with the word banana in it. So that's one way that you can find uh, people. Um, the other thing that's becoming more popular, and you'll probably start seeing this on the the, the desktop version as it starts rolling out, is uh, uh, the guided search. So guided search is something relatively new, which is when you use your mobile device and you start typing in words for uh, a term that you're searching for, it actually gives you other terms that are related to your initial search term. So over here, uh, the example that Pinterest gave is, well, I'm going to type in running, uh, and then you can see pins from running, but it also shows you other kind of these tiles, like, well, why don't you click on motivation, or click on songs, and click on tips, and when you, you add that into the guided search, a whole new set of results will appear, which also means that you'll be able to find a whole new set of pins, a whole new set of users. Uh, so that's kind of a great way to go. It uh, gives a lot of detail into, you know, for example, what your competitors might be pinning, uh, what you should be pinning, what's popular, uh, everything that you want to see under the sun. Uh, it's really great. So if you haven't tried guided search on your mobile device yet, it's something I really highly recommend that you try. Uh, so that kind of wraps up mo pretty much our presentation for today. Uh, and I know, you know, I hope, do we have time for some questions, Peg? Uh, we do. I was just going to check and see if we had any. Let's see. Hmm. How do I, here's a question from Elaine Copeland. How do I retrieve contact information from those who have clicked my pins 
or repinned my items? And then Alyssa Meredith answered her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go, Alyssa. Thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess really there really is no quick and easy way. It does take a little bit of clicking around to find that information. Hopefully they filled out their, their account profile and they have, you know, maybe a Twitter link in there or a website link. But if it's just a personal user, you might not be able to get that contact information. And the best thing that you can do if you really want to have contact with them, which, you know, is it's a good thing to thank people who pin your content every now and then, um, okay. is start the conversation in the pin's comments and say, hey, thanks so much for pinning. Or if you had a question for them, ask it there. And, and then maybe, you know, if they don't have that other way to contact them, they can maybe guide you to their, you know, their, their email or something. Yeah, it's definitely not the network where you can connect directly with people other than putting a note in the comments. Um, I would so let's. I'll throw a couple questions out for you guys, just really basic ones that are not going to be hard to answer. But how about um, group, how about collaborative boards? Like, what are your tips for collaborative boards? Since you guys didn't talk too much about that, if somebody asks you to join a board, is it a good idea? What should you think about? Vincent, you want to take this one? Yeah, um, so yeah, feel free to chime in right after Cynthia. I think group <laughs> boards that are that kind of match what your business is about or what your blog is about is a great idea. So for example, I had someone that, you know, she runs an Etsy shop and she joined, you know, this these a lot of groups that are just designated for Etsy people. Uh, they're well managed, there's not a lot of spammers, um, you know, she double checks to make sure that they are relevant to her business before she joins. So if it's if it's something that you know is going to be good for you, it's not filled with spammers, then that's a good way to go. Um, what's your two cents, Cynthia? Yeah, group boards can be really powerful in helping you pull your audiences together to help you grow that following really quickly. But just as, as Vincent kind of said, you have to be careful, check it out, make sure it makes sense for your business. So let's say somebody approached me about joining a, a, a board, which means that I can pin to that board and other people can pin to that board. Um, and let's say the topic was rock wall climbing. I can probably get two feet up a rock wall and that's about as far as I can go and then I get tired. Um, so that wouldn't be the best fit for me. It doesn't really go with my business, it doesn't go with my personal interests. Um, so it really wouldn't make sense for me to join that board. So although I'm flattered I was invited, it may not be the best fit for me. Um, so really take a look at it, do some research and really will going back to what I said, will it serve your followers? Because if people follow your entire account, they could follow that group board as well. Um, and if if it ends up being a spammy board, if it ends up being, you know, something where people just pin random things to and it really doesn't have any focus or meaning or purpose, it's not going to serve the people that you're trying to serve. So so really do a little bit of research before you do that. So, so here's, just, uh, here's a tricky question for group boards. What if you have a pin that did like really, really well on a group board, like it has like a couple hundred repins? Like you could potentially lose that pin if it's not your own personal group board. It, is it bad social etiquette to repin that pin to one of your boards? Not to repin it, but to change the board? I'm not understanding your question. How, what do you mean change the board? Could, you can change, like if you, have a, oh, if you yeah. have a pin, you can change the board on it and it keeps the repin. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when you go and edit a pin, you can change which board it is assigned to. I think that would be a little bit not, I don't know, I guess. I don't so, know. so would you recommend just repinning it? Because usually I, a pin that's popular will be popular again. But I would I, think so. Yeah, I, I haven't really seen anybody talk about that, but it's just something I've been yeah. wondering about. Because somebody in um, Kelly Lieberman's pin chat group on Facebook got knocked off of a group board and she had really good pins on there that were her personal pins that did really well and then she lost the pin and all. It, technically oh. the repins really aren't yours if it's on that board. Yeah, because you, if you're not the owner or creator of that board. Right. So, yeah. so that's yeah. something to think about. But I, I do have some group boards which are amazing. So Yeah. Join Peg's boards. <laughs> <laughs> she allows it. <laughs> um, okay, so one so one last quick thing before we go. If anybody wants to try Canva to make Pinterest pins, which are very easy on there, you can go in, try a design, even if you've already made one before, and tweet your image with the hashtag Canva Convert, and I will send you a free copy of Eighth Author, Publisher, Entrepreneur by Guy Kawasaki and Sean Welch. So you can get a free book just for trying it. You don't have to do an image that costs a dollar or spend any money. It's 100% free. So um, I'll just throw that out there. And 
Otherwise, Guy would be upset with me. We don't want to upset Guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. And, and just to, if people are actually wondering, yeah, um, you know, the, the slides that I actually made from today's presentation are actually all made within Canva. So if you're kind of wondering awesome. what some of the technical capabilities are, um, each of those slides, it wasn't just the photos, I actually made uh, my parts all on there. So even this last slide was done on Canva. So uh, awesome. you can see it's very beautiful, uh, very elegant. Um, so, you know, again, uh, you know, thanks to Peg, and uh, yeah, hashtag Canva convert to get your free book. Yeah. And then the, the awesome thing is if you make a presentation like this, you can save a PDF and then you can upload it to SlideShare. There's like so oh, many yeah. ways you can repurpose quick, you know. So like we can make this into a blog post, embed the video, embed the SlideShare. It's like <laughs> so awesome. There's so many things to do with stuff that you create. So many good things. Yeah. yeah. So uh, first, uh, well, lastly, I want to thank you both for taking the time and sharing some Pinterest knowledge with us. And I want to make sure that everybody that's watching this follows Cynthia and Vincent on Google Plus and Pinterest, so you can catch more of them everywhere else. This was this was kind of my way of introducing them to the Google world. Um, so I hope you all enjoy them, and thank you so much for watching. Thanks, Peg. Thanks, Peg. Thanks everybody for joining us today. Thanks. Bye.